Honorable members, you are warmly welcome in this meeting uh, of the 22nd of March, a day, a day after um, a big day of human rights, uh, the 21st of March. I hope we, celeb we all celebrated that day well, those who went to celebrations and meetings and stuff like that. You are warmly welcome to this meeting. The officials of the portfolio committee, um, Valerie and the offic other officials, you are also warmly welcome to this meeting. Officials of the department led, of course, by Mayor Ranzu, uh, you are also welcomed. Uh, are we having media people here, Valerie? Um, Chair, um, as you know, the meeting is streamed on YouTube, a live stream this morning. Um, mm -hmm. So the YouTubers are online. Those are the only media people that I'm aware of. Thank you very much. Let me also extend a, a hand of warm, warm welcome to our guest this morning from Okasamba, uh, led of course by Mr. Lies. You are warmly welcome to our meeting. We will give you an, a, an opportunity to present in some few minutes from now. Uh, Valerie, I have not noted two written apologies, an apology by minister and 18 DG who are held up in another meeting with the, the SCOPA. And uh, of course, uh, you have just raised a possible apology by the deputy minister because of the bereavement uh, um, in her family. Has Mr. Stolle apologized, Valerie? Um, yes, Chair, as usual, uh, Mr. Sitole always um, contact us in advance when he's attending the tourism meeting that is scheduled at the same time. And we also, Chair, have an apology from uh, Ms. Mashlati, who also have a bereavement in the family. She's currently on, on family responsibility leave as well. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Valerie. I think those are the apologies. Let me now move on and, and uh, uh, allow item, now, uh, item one. Briefing on a petition from residents of Ukasamba local municipality, all the way from KwaZulu, Natal province, calling on the assembly to investigate the state of roads in their municipality. Valerie, a short, a short brief before I allow them. Um, in terms of what, Chair, I just need to, to be more specific. The, in terms of the, um, this item? Yes, Chair. Um, this uh, petition was uh, referred to the committee uh, um, and tabled in September last year. So now finally the committee has time to meet with, with the community. In terms of the petition, um, as members may be aware of, since I forwarded it, the, uh, the petition was sent to the National Assembly uh, to report um, for uh, consideration. So in terms of process chair, the committee has to consider the petition and report to the National Assembly on it. So at the end of this process, um, whatever process the committee is going to follow to process um, the petition, which in uh, previous um, uh, committees meant a meeting with the, with the, um, with the um, people who made the petition and going on oversight to the area. And after that, make um, recommendations to the house in terms of the way forward for the petition. So it was forwarded, it was tabled by Mr. Lees after that, the committee sent a letter to invite the com community to brief um, the, the, the committee on the petition. 
And today, Chair, is the meeting that was set up to now hear what the details are of that petition and also to, to determine a way forward in how to process it so that the committee reports back to the House on the outcome of all the engagements and the way forward. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, I uh, thought you'd also indicate that we have set aside about 30 minutes for the um, uh, presentation by Mr. Lees and the, the team. I've already welcomed them. Let me allow um, Mr. Lees to have his opening remarks and uh, introduce his team. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, it's great to, to be in your committee for a change, as I should be in the Scopa Committee with your minister, um, um, who's, who's talking there about Prasa and the, and the problems there. But it's great to be with you. Thank you for, for having us and, um, and making us feel welcome. Um, Mr. Chairman, you, you have a very difficult portfolio to deal with. Uh, roads in South Africa need a lot of attention, and we all know that. But in particular, the, we're looking today at roads in an area which you say you are familiar with, which is great. And it's just across the mountains from, from, from your home. And it's an area which relies heavily on tourism and agriculture for its economy. But it has a very, very high level of unemployment. Um, Sadly, during the apartheid years, many South Africans who are Black were forcibly settled in areas along the mountains there where there's no real economic activity, and, and they rely heavily on the tourism in, um, sector and, and on agriculture. And so the particularly tourism, we have obviously, as we do in many parts of the country, three types of road. There's the national roads that are looked after by Sanrail, and that particularly is the R74. And, um, and then the provincial roads, like the R600 and R616, and then the district roads. So these, all these roads, I'm afraid, Mr. Chairman, are in a very bad state of repair. And I'll allow the, the, the team to, to, to elaborate on that. And we really are seeing a lot of economic um, problems with businesses and agriculture in, in that municipality, particularly the tourism. Now that um, the, during the lockdown in particular, when foreign travel was, uh, was un unable to be undertaken, um, we didn't get the influx of local tourists because very often um, the word is out there how bad the roads are and it's not worth going down. I mean, and you'll hear later about Olifis Hook Pass, um, which was closed again last week. So, Mr. Chairman, I have with me um, at uh, today in particular, um, Megan Benham, who's the proprietor of the Cavenberg Resort, um, and 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 uh, Councillor Thais Janser van Rensburg, and then members of the community um, from the, from Okotlamba, not just up in the mountains. Woodstock is a suburb of Bergville, um, which uh, is, is uh, next door to Badani, also near Bergville. So um, the, the, the situation with the roads is something that affects not just the, the actual proprietors of establishments, but the ordinary people. And so, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I'd like to hand over to Tace to um, to lead us through the delegate through the presentation, uh, I'm not sure who else he's going to be asking to do the pre presentation with them. Um, but uh, with your permission, sir, can can I hand over to him? <clears throat> yes, thank you, thank you, sir. You can hand over to him. Uh, good morning, chair, and uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> and honourable members of parliament. Uh, my name is Tace Janser van Rensburg. I am a resident here in Ukuflamba, I have been for two decades. Um, I've also worked in hospitality and tourism for two decades. I know what a transformative industry it is for South Africa. And then I'm also a local part-time councillor. 
Now, uh, I did send you a report last week on the roads. Obviously, I'm not an engineer, so it's not a technical report, but it did highlight some of the most pressing needs that we have got in this area to do with roads. Now, in the last three to four years, we have been engaging with many spheres of government, uh, both local and provincial, about the roads. Uh, we've escalated that, we've got the press involved, um, but unfortunately, up until today, we did not get any meaningful resolve to our problems. And that led us to Parliament. You guys obviously provide oversight to the executive, and um, we come to you today, cap in hand, to ask that you please assist us. Well, are we going to talk about the roads today? Obviously, I'm not an engineer, so I cannot speak to the technical matters of it, and it is a highly technical issue, but uh, we can speak to the humanitarian side of it. I also just want to stress that we need to please keep the following two fundamentals in mind. The first one being the fact that um, in rural areas, we normally only have one road. If you live in a city or in an urban area, you normally can take an option to take a detour if the one road is not working, et cetera, et cetera. Where I am today on, on, in Woodstock, uh, this community is 40 kilometers from Bergville and for the 80,000 South Africans that live in this community, there's one road. If that road fails, they are cut off from the rest of the world. And it sort of like touches on the R74 and the Willy Fischuk Pass, which we have been talking about a lot lately. And a very sad turn of events, that pass was now officially closed to heavy vehicles last week. That is after we've been raising the alarm for the last three years as a community concerned about that pass, concerned about the fact that there has been washaways and breakpoints on that pass. And once again, unfortunately, nothing has been done. And that also leads to the fact that we've talked about tourism extensively and the fact that uh, the tourism industry in the Northern Berg that relies heavily on tourists from the Gauteng and the Free State area will now be cut off from this income generating source that uh, looks after this community. And it's not just about tourism, it's not just about the hotels and the staff, it's also about the many other industries that relies on these hotels. That's from the people that grow the food in the local communities, the artist who's there for the conferences and the entertainment, the decor companies, et cetera. There's a multitude of smaller businesses that all, res all relies on tourism in Ukuklamba. The other fundamental I wanna quickly just speak about is when you come to any hotel or resort in the Drakensberg, you will note that the infrastructure, the bulk infrastructure is supplied by that establishment. The water you drink is cleaned on site. The sewage system is done on site. Um, the electricity is provided by ESCOM at great cost. So all the infrastructure we do ourselves, and the only thing we ask government normally to do is our roads, and yet it's just been an abject failure of late. So um, today I've got Megan. Megan Beddingham is also our tourism chair. She's gonna give you the stats and stuff from tourism on the area, so we can highlight the humanitarian plight. With us, Mr. Nlambi and Mr. Kabinda, they both in transport. And after we've been to Megan, we're going to come back to me. As I said, I'm here today in Woodstock. I'm with Mr. Flongwane. I met with them probably about six months ago. He's a community elder, and they were complaining about the roads at that time. And I thought, well, today, if we're going to speak to Parliament and to our MPs, what a great opportunity to come back here to Mr. Flongwane for him to give an opportunity to speak to you as well. So without further ado, I'm going to give a hand over to Megan. Megan. Good morning. Thank you very much for um, allowing us to present. Um, we are very grateful for the opportunity. I am Megan Beddingham. I'm from the Drakensberg region. And it's a good morning to the chair, the honorable members and all the stakeholders. Tourism has really been badly impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. And as we move out of this mess, we found a greater challenge is unfolding with um, our infrastructure disintegrating. We are limping into a crisis and a crisis that really can be avoided. Um, I'm just going to focus on three things. And the first thing is jobs. In this immediate valley in the Amazizi area, there are 568 permanent positions and another 141 temporary positions at stake. A while back, we were told that every job in tourism assists another eight individuals. So essentially, the ability to employ or not employ could affect more than 5,000 people in this rural area. Tourism really does rely on good infrastructure. We need safe roads where the access is relatively easy and tourists feel safe 
sadly, the crumbling infrastructure means that tourists will choose other regions. They can't afford to be stranded on the side of the road with two flat tires. They won't jeopardize the safety of their own families, and they certainly won't return if nothing is done. The deterioration of the R74, the P304, the D119, and the R600 is of grave concern to us. We have seen how badly affected the free state is because of the disastrous road infrastructure. Travelers reroute their holidays to avoid these areas, and every B&B, pub stall, to a driver, transport provider, and crafter misses out. Is this what is to become of the Drakensberg region? At the moment, the road through the Amazizi village to the Royal Natal National Park is in a complete state of disrepair. Potholes, washaways, and the Tugela Bridge is actually completely closed because it is dangerous. The R600 accessing the Champagne Valley, which employs about 3,000 people, is simply dangerous with cars having to veer onto incoming traffic to avoid potholes. And collapsing culverts, sinking infrastructure, has many up in arms on the R74. And business, businesses are truly concerned because they're going to have to close. But tourism is more than jobs. It provides a ladder of development for many youngsters, accessing employment through tourism, and starting with menial tasks and working their way up. They gain skills, they gain confidence as they grow. And while st students are studying at universities, they also use hotels, lodges, activity businesses as their source of additional income during the holiday seasons. Tourism also invests in empowering communities. In the Northern Drakensberg, we have established a foundation phase school, which currently has 100 children. Children learn to read so that they can read to learn. We support 18 preschools in the Greater Amazizi District through teacher training, porridge deliveries, and resource development. And why do we get involved? Because parents here value quality education. Currently, there are more than 50 Amazizi children commuting daily to Harry Smith to attend excellent schools. The subsiding road and the collapsing culvert means that these children's future is actually at stake. Tourism is also regularly linked to conservation initiatives. One of the greatest tasks we have is to ensure that we provide for the future of our children and our children's children. And businesses can only invest in conservation if they are successful. Tourism will only survive if we look after these key spaces. It's all closely linked. And what about future jobs? Good infrastructure links towns, cities, and tourism hubs. The movement of people allows for the, the development of support structures, such as fuel stations, fast food outlets, and even overnight accommodation. Take away the roads, and the whole district will collapse. The R74 is a crucial link. It's a crucial alternative to the, R3, to the N3. It's the link between the Free State and KZN. It's our link to Kauteng, and it's vital for businesses. At the end of the day, repairing this network provides immediate work for our communities. And in the long run, it will mean the survival of an already battered industry. We implore you to help us, please, for jobs, for more than just jobs, but for our futures too. Thank you very much. I'm now going to hand over to Mr. Nkabindi and Mr. Nklambi, who are from the Okaklambi municipality. They're with me here this morning, and um, they're just going to share a little bit about their concerns about the roads. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Miguel. Um, Cruz. Yeah, well. Ninja and Cruz. Sapiras Nazor. Pamba no sofa. Yeah, I'm a sofa. Oh, Nago. As is when you get this was a sekaya, nitty. No, I'm glad I didn't put off it. Who turned on cabin law? Emma's is in. So in some call colo Pedro four no R74. In this Kalang Ayala, sing a band of a pillar macai. Si pila goglima nano transporta in Ghana you this cornut stole sick to lay a band of a con of a seven. Jango Banji si si la imqua to spila gyona kung nova nanji pela nova ayik if Novatation, 
I got go away feeling as in the airline jingles, no man, no man, no bomb, but for the sort who came also as a temporal along a sense of Montenegro. My job with mother's inning, the Samba Gulum, Patolo, or Hamba, the Sasadanati, and Gubin Pella, sing as a jingles ending at that. Where's a good job and get another to see the last fully Motina Lapia, Colian Land of Splagion. No, we have one day our servants, our sons are like our tail. Good man, I go from Quakabas or was Bahaman, I buy him seventeen. He modest was what had as a Sisibona and the Maprize as it was a cupuga, a petrol, in the overnight simis accusers of cold. Mabe and a matire to the Mabe, a modest and a papatula. Zia Cubans in white as tenement says of the Sataba Avant, Abam sends in his business was not to go temperate. Marco was not tell a good tramp. He is like a leg a cool to gloom quarto, to put it in a matter of seven. Jenwan is a cool man, the Lavanda was a scuba, our sons, the Mountel. His interest was the wheel of woman, and I am cool. I was to Abagas, which I never was to Utibanga. Bangazak and Ali Malawai Tola and Jamadwa, whenever Sasavans, I started seed into Inyan Ioki Pelele as a civil or no goody. He entered as a game sense in a sea copella or more a game sense in a was of all. He don't hang out best. Nana Guti, the import from the corner, the big Billy Yonk, Sescuma, the big Billy Yonk, and no man and Saiba and Macam. I he got a yonk, a yonk, a yonk over again, I should take a good Matana on my bed names at Long for the corner of Jim Cotwang Echo Day. And tell a woman to love. Chairperson, you are muted. Thank you, Valerie. No matter what Scottish name is the most transporting guns a score where he has smith. I go hand big to child look for all the superst. I hope name for the Sagusilo, I explain the pin in the yard. Long it. Senzuela, Sabomantis was a second. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Lees, you, you're done with your presentation. Can I open the floor now for honorable members? Mr. Chairman, if we could just return to TACE at Woodstock um, for, for a little further, and then I think that will be the end of the presentation and, and we'll take questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chair, can I just ask, I did send through a report to the Secretary last week. Was that report circulated to the committee? We do have the report, yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. And then I'm here with Mr. Fungwane, who I said, I mentioned I had a meeting with him as a community elder about six months ago, and they were complaining about the road. So I would also like to give him an opportunity to speak to you. Um, but then in my report is all the pictures and the videos of what the roads are currently looking like in the greater... Kuklamba district. Thanks, Jay. Over to Mr. Kuklamba. <coughs> okay. Nguan. Yeah, we have a visit. Ninja Nguan. Ya pila nja nina. Asiku uzo Nguan. Ya pila nja nina. No, asiku na unite hai kubega siizo. Yeah, hai mbe mtuba na wakasa wane mi. Eh, eh. Hey, Lapas Nanking are pulling, thinking I were Pulu, Galas in the air to Amans. A Amans are sex, say I should pay, and Amans, Lapa Bantuana, say I should pay, have a quit. And as in the jar. Numquaco and what the Ushaba never quit was Mazis, Numquaco, Aw, Kumquaco. See Hamburg up soon, Nova talk show no moon, Seph Nemo to see Captain Tata Miss, see Umbega lay and Quaco in a station. I was on gaining motto, my paga teams in it. Naba Kayo Manja, I was on Gena Matraka, Abuleta, Isis Sabati, 
Simende, the final silent, but when Juan and Jaganjanism into the two Yonagala, Womquak, Ong Echo La Impella, eight thinking in Impella in the Malabi. Okay, Sir Gozonga, Sir Bo. Well, let me quickly just try and um, um, translate or uh, is there anybody wants to quickly translate for the committee uh, for those who cannot uh, hear Zulu? I went away and I saw a lot in Gizzo to leg I mean we and so to leg again. Oh when the so to leg to leave okay. Bring it to your sons this is Zulu but I get gloomy. Yes, I've got Angis Bali, Angis Fundi, and Fundanga got in a disadvantage in Gessizolo. Okay, Sir Bong. I think, uh, in a nutshell, uh, uh, Mr. Gabinde, Mr. Mklambi, Mr. Tongwani um, are raising similar issues of this bad state of the road. <clears throat> um, that impacts badly in terms of the uh, transport business. They can't transport people from that area to Harrismith as some of us uh, uses their transport as their business to ferry people uh, between Harrismith and uh, Beckville and the surrounding areas. They have mentioned the bad state of roads, especially the R74, Olive Pass, that has since been closed uh, permanently since from last week, uh, roads like 304. And um, they actually say the state of the roads around that area of Beckville is shocking. Uh, those people, they also raise an issue of uh, uh, water which is uh, beginning to be problematic. And uh, those who are building their homes, uh, building material cannot be accessed because trucks cannot move in uh, and bring those uh, building materials. As I've said, cars are unable also to utilize these roads unless you want your car to um, really be uh, unroadworthy. In a nutshell, um, this is what the three gentlemen said. I hope I have uh, translated what they said in a nutshell. Sia Vumela and our police. Sia Vumela and God, so called in Tengan. And what you forget, Mr. Chairman, was the comment made twice. I think I heard it that the potholes are so big you can bury a dog in them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no. Thank you. Thank you very much. Honorable members, <clears throat> that is the presentation. Any Anyone who wants to say uh, something uh, so that we then move away from this item having done um, um, what we are supposed to do, I see uh, Honorable Chris Hoon Singer, DAMP. I see Honorable Tamsanga Mapena. <clears throat> That's how it is written. I see Honorable McDonald. That's how it is written. I see uh, Honorable Nondan Donald Chungu. I see Honorable Figile Kumalo. Those are the hands I see uh, in that order, please. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and thank you very much uh, to colleague Honorable Alf Lees for introducing this very important matter, bringing it to the Portfolio Committee. Also, for the submissions that we have heard from Mrs. Uh, Megan Benningham, uh, Councillor Thais Janssen van Rensburg, and Mr. Timba Nklambi. Um, the other two gentlemen's names, unfortunately, I didn't get, but your input is appreciated, and also the translation. Thank you very much for that. 
I also want to commend the professional document that was submitted, uh, which provided for information that we could read prior to this presentation. Um, and as I uh, gathered from the submission, there are basically four roads that have been highlighted as being critical. Uh, the R600, R74, R304, and D184. Um, if there are others, um, uh, please mention those. Um, or if I have the wrong road, then also please correct this. But it's rather important then to get the gist of um, the, the crisis in terms of um, not just uh, mobility and transportation, but then also the effect with uh, which this has. Now, it has been highlighted that the tourism industry has been affected uh, to a large extent, also agriculture, um, that being the two main elements that's been um, that's been mentioned. Um, has there been any attempt to quantify the economic um, potential loss or economic potential holdback um, in the fact that there, there isn't um, adequate um, mobility and transport available? Um, has there been any effort um, around quantifying this? What, what are the actual losses? Um, we've heard of um, tire losses, incidents, um, accidents, crashes. Um, but over and above that, the, the hindrance of not being able to move um, like one would uh, on a normal basis. Chairperson, something which I also want to add um, to this su subject, because um, it is well known that we have a huge road maintenance backlog. My concern, which I really want to put um, on the table, um, is the allocation uh, of funding um, and the increments in which these allocations have been increased or not over the past five years. So if we look at the national allocation for Sunroll, who looks after 21,000 kilometers, the Sunderl has enjoyed a increase in budget of 21 billion rands in the last five years. The provinces combinedly look after 273,000 kilometers of a road, and they have only enjoyed a 4 billion rand increase. So it's a 4 billion rand increase to look after 273,000 kilometers opposed to a 21 billion rand increase of Sandral, who looks after 21,000 kilometers of road. To get a different perspective on this, um, Sandral has enjoyed an increase per kilometer over the last five years of 600,000 rands, whereas the combined provincial responsibility in looking after 273,000 kilometers have only enjoyed a five year increase of. 18,000 kilometers. So, Chairperson, I want to add this um, as a underlying reason for the increase in backlog and also the availability of budget to act upon petitions like we've had to listen to this morning and that we would probably have a look at um, in other regions uh, in the coming weekend. Uh, given the oversight which is scheduled. So uh, from my side, uh, I only have the question around the particular roads. Um, other than that, um, whether there's been any impact study on the economic potential um, holdback um, because of the lack of um, being able to um, transport goods and to move um, like in normal conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Onsinger. Wow, my pena. Master Rakele Pambi, I'm sorry. I'm to go to the Chippesen, the Tosi Tuning to the Tanji Committee in its same. Just to say, Chair, that um, it's, it's heartbreaking to hear. Oh, first of all, let me greet uh, our. Integralizate our campaign to to umpire to Velanga in case it then and their um and the submission that they have made and therefore that they are here with us um this morning, but just to say that it's heartbreaking that uh, even during something as sensitive as a funeral, that 
um, the the community has to um, remove a casket from uh, a, a a delegated car like a has, and then they have to carry, it. Um, and then they and then they have to drop it on the other side um, of the of the of the community because cars can't access those roads because of the bad conditions of the of those roads. It goes back to what we've been saying in terms of the uh, provincial um, <clears throat> uh, maintenance grants, which are there, which are given by the departments to so say, the time has come for us as a community to go and follow the money into these provinces. And it's, it again uh, places a great emphasis on what we've been saying that there are provinces that we have not really visited and that it is important that we go there because those provinces have been given an allocation. And therefore, it's not enough that we receive reports in the committee that seeks to suggest that something has been done. It's about time that we follow the money, we go and see if these people say that um, something has been done, what has been done, what has been the achievement. But it's also important to underscore that when we go there, we're not going there as some sort of a punitive exercise or a vindictive exercise, but also to applaud some of the good work that um, some provinces are doing, uh, because it's important that you strike a balance, because there are other provinces which are actually doing what they need to do. But also, Chair, to say, uh, perhaps as the committee and as the chairperson of the committee, you have to put your foot down as far as us being allowed to go and do oversight. Every time that we have to go and do oversight, there is something that comes up. And it consistently comes up. There's only one modus operandi that we get a letter from the chairperson responsible for committees that somehow when we have planned and agreed on a program as a community to go on oversight, that our oversights every time have to be cancelled. And we're told that, no, you can't go on oversight. But it's so, you know, it's, it's surprising that this only affects the Transport Portfolio Committee more than it affects other committees. Perhaps maybe there's a concerted effort uh, to undermine your leadership and also to ensure that perhaps maybe you fail as a chairperson. I don't know. But um, you can't fail, Chair. Um, and these committees will can't fail. We do have a, a mandate to go on oversight. There are way too many roles um, that we can all um, say that these are the roles. But I think since this petition is here, obviously we'll have to engage with the department, Sandra and, and everyone else, and including the department in terms of um, if they have any transfers to that municipality or to that province, and if that is part of um, their plans, if it's a municipality, is it, in, is it um, uh, part of their integrated development plan in the next financial year, now municipalities are going to be doing their budgets, um, what is it that they are doing? Um, and so, so all I'm saying, Chair, is that we have to put our foot down. If we've agreed on oversight, we definitely have to go and fulfill that mandate. I thank you so much, Chair. <clears throat> thank you very much, Tonitra. Um, Mastololande Lai, Honorable McDonald. Uh, Chairperson, good morning. Good morning, honourable members. Uh, Chairperson, I'm leaving my video off for um, my network is not so good this morning. Um, Chairperson, um, I would like to thank the presenters for the for the very comprehensive report that they've given to us on the on the road on the roads. And uh, Chairperson, as a, as a side note, um, I actually prefer driving that road when I leave for, when I go from the Free State to to KwaZulu Natal um, because it's such a beautiful area and um, and my honeymoon was there and in that municipality so um, it's uh, quite close to my heart but Chairperson I think we must get the only way to get an actual answer is to get the department to give us a comprehensive report on what happened what happened to the money that was there was spent there and why is the roads in the state that it is. And also, Jefferson, um, I think um, we must, as a committee, take an honest and hard look at the model on how roads are maintained in this country. Because on the one hand, we have Sandra that has beautifully maintained roads and a very well-functioning and well-budgeted 
and the municipalities and the local governments and, and provinces are, have got this enormous <clears throat> amount of roads, but underfunded. And, and we need to find a balance between the two, uh, Chairperson. And I think, I think the funding model is broken. And I think we need to look at that, Chairperson, because this type of, 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 of destruction of roads is not just in, in, in Okaglamba municipality. It's in other municipalities in the Free State, other municipalities in the Northwest. They, it's, it's, it's become a crisis. I think of all the roads of the 273,000 kilometers of, of, of roads that are maintained by provinces, I think there's most probably 70,000 kilometers of roads that's still viable as roads. And this is, if we don't start doing something about it very soon, there will be, it, it will have dire consequences to the economy of this country. Uh, Chairperson, thank you very much, and uh, um, uh, we hope to hear from Transport Department soon. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Mabdi. Um, Mkhonejwa u nontando noluchungu. Can you please unmute yourself? Thank you very much. Sorry, Chair. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and greetings to the committee and to the delegation of Ookasamba. Uh, mine is very simple, Chair. This is not the only province where roads are in this condition, but I want to thank the, com the, 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 the delegation for bringing this to the attention of the committee, because on several occasions, we have written to the minister to get a report on this kind of uh, a, a, a issue, but we have not received any response from them. So I would really want to thank them for bringing it to our attention. And I'm pleading to this committee that we should not just take reports. We must follow this up and make sure that we go back and report to the community. We also need a detailed report from that municipality to see how much they received and how, how, how those funds were utilized. And again, Chair, I want to second uh, my colleague here to say uh, the issue of oversight, I think you need to take it up with uh, the, 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 the the parliament to say there is no way that every time we have to go to oversight there is a letter saying that we cannot go, go due to, 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 to parliament proceedings. So it is up to you to make sure that this committee functions properly and we do go on oversight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Maluchungu. Mdoma, Genesis. Ngabonga Slalo Nabingelela, who is Slalo, Gabingelela, was a way to Hamalung, a parliament at Son Pegile, Gabingelela, with dedication, Yasoka Sam. Chairperson, thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, having this uh, presentation being presented uh, on a very uh, important month, which is the Human Rights Month, as you said earlier on in your opening remarks. The mine will be the comments, Chair, uh, but very few, uh, to say uh, as much as this comment, this presentation is very important and uh, alerting us as the portfolio committee that there are this kind of uh, Damages and uh, very bad areas in in our uh, country uh, in the area of KZN. But for me, it was going to be very, I mean, uh, making sense to me as a particular uh, to be uh, presented uh, by people that are directly affected, and not uh, with other interests. Uh, because uh, I'm saying this, Chairperson. Uh, because umaula lelo ba kusongwa ne umaula lelo ubaba o o unkabinde 
for me, as much as they have in their uh, business interests, such as their uh, taxes, but uh, it, it is very evident that they are, they are brought into the system to come and be part of the presentation so that uh, it must make sense that they are there. Uh, I, 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 I'm sure you told me was said to be Umdum Tala Lapenda win. We should have had long in second. Uh, I would like to, to, to concur with the Honorable McDonald to say, let us have a, a, a department to give us a proper report on what is actually happening in Lapa. Uh, because, uh, like KZN, I'm sure you're also aware because you're part of KZN somehow. Uh, uh, and Mr. Lee knows what I'm going to talk about. That KZN, uh, I want to say 80% or 85% of um, KZN may say a code. Uh, that is why I'm saying maybe the department can give us a report for, on this particular issue. Uh, lastly, apart from what I've been said, Chairperson, that I want to put this, this on record, that uh, uh, although it is not uh, within the, the presentation, I want to say this because I might not get in uh, after this, that uh, can you please assist me? to talk to your secretariat as Kutolo committee uh, to be informed that I'm also part of this committee. Uh, I need to receive the information, like the information of the Kutolo committee dates and every stuff, because I submitted long ago my private uh, email, but I, I don't get anything. For your information, I'm always getting into the meetings because Priscilla Masati always shared this on, on, on WhatsApp. Otherwise, I don't receive anything. Whereas I, 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 I submitted very early my, my private email address to the uh, Secretary of the Public Committee. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, um, Dunga. As you lower your hand and uh, Honorable Nontando uh, should also lower her hand because we have already passed Thank you very much. You follow suit the uh, Ndunga by lowering your hand <clears throat> as we give an opportunity to Mkhayes. Kena Mkhayes who obey this in a way. Modula Sipulo, your trumpeting, Ke Lavella Tune, own Panyo, and Amoletat in La Pompi, no Horelen, Nakela Tele, Lamota Pitong, Mokopano, Eno, a repehiling, Le Hatta Takis at Lehotinga video, Yameka Horka, Lala, Sars Fatora Sammy has a levy, he is a lesson to Tota. Um, Chaperson, I echo the sentiments of the honorable members that have spoken in as far as the presentation is concerned. In the context, of course, of the uh, tourism sector and the jobs that it creates uh, by the presenters. And I would like to thank the submitter of the petition as well as those that have presented. And make a general remark and a comment in as far as the issue of roads is concerned. Chairperson Honorable Noluchungu indicated the state of uh, roads in the Northwest province. And I would like to make a very crucial example in as far as uh, these conditions are concerned. The Northwest Department of um, Public Works and Roads has just recently wasted over 65 million rands by regraveling a road and by appointing a contractor who did not finish or complete the road because of conflict that are, uh, conflicts that arose between the contractor and the department. Whilst that may not, that, that may not be the case with uh, the said municipality, it would be interesting to find out from them what has been the relationship between the provincial department that is responsible for the maintenance and the building of roads, as well as the responsible uh, local government in, in as far as the conditions of these roads are concerned. Maituma Maholo Mudula Stulo, Eloho Noho Lebella Hore, Bao Baba Neilo Mpiro, Yaho Katokomela, Maemo Aditela, Modi Provencing, Lidimaspala, Tedifaro Lohaneng, Africa Bora. 
gore a madi ao a dirisiwa ka tsela e matshwanedi ka tsela e maleba ka phiro ya di ra contracta tse o di dirang mereko o felletseng kana is there a correlation between the appointment of contractors the nature of those contractors as well as the subsequent work that they need to do in as far as road construction and road maintenance is concerned because at the end of the day government remains accountable to south africans and as far as road infrastructure is concerned. Whilst Honorable McDonald, of course, bemoans the funding model for provinces and municipalities, we also need to recognize the amounts of money that have been lost by local municipalities and provinces as far as the construction of roads and maintenance of roads is concerned. It cannot be acceptable that we have potholes where it is possible to bury a dog. Such things should not be, we should not be having such conversations. And certainly such comparisons should not exist within the context of our, of, our, of our society. And it is greatly heartbreaking to hear the example that Honorable Mabera made about people needing to take out a casket and carrying it because there are no roads. The conditions of our roads in our country needs to be dealt with without any fear or favor by the department because that is our responsibility as a portfolio committee to provide that oversight, to make sure that municipalities and provinces, much as Sandral is taking good care of our national roads and the network thereof, we need to be able to make sure as a portfolio committee that those spheres of government equally understand why it is important to construct and maintain road infrastructure in this country and the impact that it has on employment, whether it is the tourism sector, whether it is the transport sector, and equally in terms of the employment of our people in those sectors. Um, Manget, Uncle because she is from Guazulu Natal. She know the states, the status of 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 our road in Guazulu Natal. We are as we take no more kosuga emakoko. We are a combe o zulela a kranskopo. Obso wanga ngoba ama ama nese a combe sport especially our Sagas in the show, Ugulokabaya, and not a hotel by a Puma and Mazotum Kakona movie. Gabangu, we have we have witnessed a road from Free State in R34 from Memel to, 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 to Newcastle. How bad that road uh, is. So now the, 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 the roads in Guazulu Natal, I think, seen actually Okasamba and the surrounding areas are very bad. <clears throat> I'm, I, I'm talking about something that I know and I witness what, what, what is happening in that area. Sometimes we have to, if you, are, you, you, you have some funeral there, we have to carry uh, uh, that somebody to, 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 to where you want to, to do your, 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 your grave in, in, in more than 10 kilometers. So I, I think the, the, the presenters, and the petition is actually reflecting what is happening in Guazulu Natal. Mangete, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Mkhaezu, kineke kupa hotel elzo mkhaezu. Kese ku files ba ka ugua kama farasha asha. Kya wana uli libe it. I Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. I hope I've given everybody a chance who wanted to raise an issue. Um, I should also appreciate 
the collective that visited us today from Mr. Uh, Mr. Lees, uh, Councillor Tays, Janse van Ransberg, uh, Memigen, um, the three presenters, Ubaba Ungwane, Utongwane, Ubaba Ungabini, Ubaba Umsha. Um, I think we should take this 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 matter very seriously, <clears throat> um, honourable members, and uh, I get a sense that we are doing that. Um, the process from here will will be that we should be able to engage and prepare for an oversight visit to that area. <clears throat> so that we write our own independent report uh, to, to Parliament, National Assembly. We should also, uh, in our preparation, rope in the Department of Transport, get their response, and get their representation in accompanying us to the area. And that will go for the municipality and the provincial um, um, government, especially the Department of Transport. Uh, am I leaving anything uh, outside, uh, Valerie, that needs to be part of this um, oversight? Okay, that, uh, that is obviously the community and the business people who made the petition and any other stakeholders that will be identified before the meeting for the community for the community meeting that normally takes place when the committee visits the area okay <clears throat> um i was talking high level <clears throat> at high level i think i've touched uh, everybody that needs to be there and then um, Honorable Hunsinga did raise the fact, a logistical fact, that we have about four roads. That is um, three hundred four, one eight four, R seventy four, and uh, six hundred. These are the roads that have been presented. I did not hear anybody raising any other um, road. Um, so we take it that these are the roads we'll be looking for a report on um, moving forward. At where we are going, I think uh, Valerie has covered uh, um, the details in terms of meeting with the community, going to these roads. Uh, of course, uh, also engaging with uh, those who came to us and presented this this issue, business people, and all the interested stakeholders in that area. We should be seen to have consulted extensively uh, on that. Um, are we in a in a in a in a position, uh, uh, Valerie, to suggest a date or two for this uh, oversight? Hey, I am currently working on a program to see how the committee can uh, accommodate um, its plans that it had to go to Northwest Mpumalanga into that week of um, 19 April to 22nd April. Um, so I will be able to give you a, a suggested program towards the end of business day on, on Thursday, Che. Okay, Valerie. Thank you very much uh, for that. Um, that um, Liz, Robert, Alfred, Liz, Genaba. It's 10 hours. Hi. Mr. Chairman, so quickly, Kamalam Gampelaman Jenangu Mazamban. So quickly. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, my zombie. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you very much for, for the proposals you've made, but I just want to emphasize one thing that Sanrel, let me start, go back a step. The backbone road through the municipality is the R74, and that is a sand rail road. And that is the road down Ulifries Hawk Pass, and but also between Bergville and Winterton, it's in a shocking state. So I would please ask that that you include sand rail in, in any reports you request um, and in the oversight. I'd, I'd really um, ask you please to make sure that happens. Um, and then, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm not sure whether you're going to give me a chance to close, but I don't have a, a great deal to say, but I can say it now if that's okay with you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, yeah, I, I, I just want to thank you and your committee for making the time available for this presentation. Um, it's, it's really vital to the well-being of my constituency um, and the people who live there. But I also want to thank, Mr. Chairman, the 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 huge amount of trouble and 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 work that's been put into by the delegation from Ocotlamba. They haven't just come here and mouthed off. They've really prepared well. They, they, they genuinely um, have put the case and, and I would really like us to, to, to thank them for the effort they're making. And there might be some self-interest involved, so be it. We all have self-interest, but the the impact upon the whole community is enormous. And so a, a, a thank you very, very much for, to them for that as well. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bauma Zamban. Thank you. Honorable Hun Singer. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I absolutely support your proposal of a um, oversight visit. Uh, to uh, the Okutlamba area. Can I also add, Chairperson, that you consider including a report prior to uh, the oversight of a budget spent in that particular area, firstly from Sanro, but then also from the other spheres um, of, of government, uh, provincial government, and also um, local government, so that we have an idea of uh, what has been spent there in the past five years, if you would allow that term uh, of coverage in terms of a preparational report, so that we get an idea what has been spent or what has been allocated and what happened with that allocation, if any money has been allocated to that particular area. Thank you, James. Thank you very much. Um, honorable member. I think that is well captured, unless there is somebody who is vehemently. Um, let me just say, um, I have proposed, um, and uh, the committee sing, seemingly is happy about the proposal, including um, what um, Honorable um, Christian Unsinger has raised. Is there anybody against the proposal, number one, that we prioritize the oversight to Ukasamba? <clears throat> number two, that we bring along the Department of Transport and those entities that are involved, like Sandra. We request for a report before we go to the oversight in terms of uh, how much has been spent there by all this fear of government from national, provincial, and the municipality. And uh, um, the roads that uh, have been um, identified, uh, I'm sure these are our roads, um, 600, 304, 184, R74. Uh, is there anybody who who's against? Or let me say, let me see hands that supports this so that we record it properly. Mkhayesu. Um, Thank you. Honorable. Mkhayesu, but I support our 
Any other hand, uh, I know Honorable Suikulo wanted to support, but Honorable Mapena and Honorable Nsinga are here. Any hand supporting this? Uh, do we still have members of this portfolio in this committee? Honorable Nsinga support, and then uh, Honorable Lisa Mang. Honorable Lawrence McDonald. By a vote, by a vote, as a bar, 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 a um, Valerie, we have closed this item and I want to thank uh, the delegation once more for braving it up and coming, uh, bringing the petition to us. We will uh, do our best to try and assist you. We have heard you and the, the pleas that you have made. I think we are um, equally capable of raising this matter and giving it uh, the attention it needs. So thank you very much as you go back, if you are traveling, traveling to your different destinations, please travel safely. Uh, we shall see you probably next month, uh, <clears throat> but we'll let you know. Thank you very much. We now can... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Hamba, Geman, Jen, and I'm Gabonga Ku. Now, Mazamba and Siabonga, Hamba and Timbalako, you are now released and freed. Yabonga areas, Masbonga, Gamazamba, and Nabantu Bonga. Sharp. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we now go into the second item. Um, continuation. Uh, on the RET bill, bill number one of 2020. Uh, Honorable Pete May is no longer here. He has attended uh, to the doctor. Uh, he has requested that. I want to just bring it to the attention of the meeting. Um, <clears throat> Mama Um, Advocate Nell. Are you here? I am always here, Chairperson. Um, you're always here. <clears throat> they say Chancellor van Rensberg has put a number of roads here, I can see uh, in the meeting. We should just open them up and uh, prepare accordingly. Thanks, uh, Councillor van Rensberg. There we are. Energetic and capable of leading us together with your team. Is, your, is the team around here? Let me hear Madlogov, Ukona. Okay, Ms. Gangan is in the meeting and Ms. Hari Charan is also here, but she is experiencing a little bit of connectivity problems this morning, but I've just admitted her back into the meeting. Ms. Gangan. Good morning, Chair. Ms. Gangan, can I see your face, please? Tilosini. Long time, Tilosini. Um. Long time, long time. Chairperson, can you see me? I can see you. I'm complaining that I've not seen you uh, in ages. Thank you very much for reconnecting with the portfolio committee. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. Harichari? 
Good morning, Chairperson, and good morning to members. We we do see your name, but we don't see your picture. Yeah, I'm starting. Uh -huh. Can you see me? Yeah, you I can me? see you. I feel like talking Zulu to you this morning. You can, uh, Chairperson. I know a little Zulu. I have some games yeah. in. <laughs> okay. I'll Thank you very you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Richardson. Thank you. <clears throat> Advocate Nell, we are in your hands, capable as they are. Thank you, Chairperson and members. Taking, um, <clears throat> coming from last week, we decided that we will continue today on page 28, and that's coincidentally clause 28 as well. So it was nice and easy to remember this morning after a lovely long weekend. So, Chair, looking at clause 28.1, the comments here from the aviation industry. Um, just to look at their recommendation here, they are saying that 20 business days is realistically too short to deal with an appeal. They suggest modifying this to three months, um, at least for appeals related to sections 22.1a, um, the determination of price control. Um, the department then indicated that it is a misunderstanding uh, on the interpretation as the days referred to is 20 business days. And the 20 business days is only for publishing the decision and for the, um, the decision and for the whole hearing or appeal. Uh, it is for the decision at the end of the hearing. So Chair, I'm just flagging or um, plighting the bowl here so that we can read the section. Section reads, within 20 business days of the conclusion of the hearing, the panel that heard the hearing must publish a decision together with the written responses. So it's not that the appeal should only take 20 business days, but it's that it must be published within 20 business days. Uh, Chair, then I'm going to carry on with um, clause 28.3. Uh, and then I will ask members input on those two because uh, the next one goes to uh, clause 34. So 28.3, the comment here is that they would um, propose to replace the term general reasonableness with the term appropriateness. So members will see that it's in, in Roman three, general reasonableness of price control and it's there in the bill. The department's response to this is that the words general reasonableness are sufficient and suitable for the bill. So Chair, um, th that is those comments from them on clause 28 before I go on to the next clause for members. Uh, if Chair can just check if the members are in agreement with the department's explanations there. I am doing exactly what you said I must do. Um, Ma'am, Advocate Nell, I don't see any problem from my members, meaning members are happy. Thank you, Che. Then members would have seen here, uh, this little Word document is the A-list as it was published. We didn't publish additional amendments uh, to clause 34, which is the next ones we're getting into from PRASA. So I'm just going to minimize our A-list so that we can see the bill. We look at this uh, clause deals with the regulator's executive structures and the comments here from PRASA. For 34.5, it is on the Executive Administrative Committee. It's this one that they want us to look at. And the comment here is that they are suggesting that the clause be amended as follows. They would like it to read that the minister on the recommendation of the board may establish other executive committees to address particular matters and provide for the authority and power. The department's response to this is that they do not agree with the suggestion because the minister will be interfering with the work of the regulator. Members will recall that um, in most board um, 
setups or board functions, um, the board will then normally, or the executive council of the, the functioning entity will determine subcommittees, uh, for example, a committee on human resources or on procurement or um, the likes. And they will then look at some matters and feed that back into the board. It's a standard practice. So that is, um, I believe, why the department has um, indicated that response. Chair, that is the section 34 input from PRASA. And then I think in the same line, I haven't seen any hands pop up on this one specifically. Chair, I will go to 351B. Process a recommendation to this is that they suggest that section 351B to D be deleted as the function is covered under 34.4. Alternatively, the advisory function contemplated under section 351B to D be that of the executive regulatory panel and not the CEO. So if I just move up a little bit to show 34.4 for members. There is 34.4. And this is um, what Prasa is saying. They're saying that this is already covered in here. The department's response is that it's important to isolate the exact additional functions of the CEO, which are not for the executive officers, noting that the executive officers um, are not part of the board. Uh, no changes are needed. So Chair, that is the response to process input on section or clause 35. Then moving to 36, it's the appointment of the executive officer. Prasa indicated here, section 36 should be augmented with minimum qualifications and experience for the chief executive officer and the executive officers. And the department's response to this was that section 36.1 is very clear and there is no need for further modification. So 36.1 then has reference here to suitably qualified persons with experience in economics, law, accounting, or the transportation industry. Then Chair, moving on to clause 38. Input from both the aviation industry and PRASA on this one. Go too fast. There we go. 38 is the function of the regulator, functions of the regulator. So, from the aviation industry, um, the recommendations are that elements that were included in the Airports Company Act and not included in this law, in this regard, suggest the following additions to Clause 38. Promote the reasonable interests and needs of users. Restrain the regulated companies from abusing their monopoly position. Also for E, they are proposing the following addition. Promote appropriate, adequate, and efficient investment in transport facilities and services. And H, after a consultative process with the regulated company and users. So the department's response to this is that in general, the objective of the economic regulation to protect the public interest, which includes users. Thus, the bill aims to deal with abuse of power and monopoly. They adopt as proposed to add E, promote, so there will be um, inclusions here proposed to be added to the A list if members agree to this. Let's see, there we go, highlighter is working. So this one will then change, uh, if members agree, to the following. Promote appropriate, adequate, and efficient investment in transport facilities and services. And then as far as the H proposal is, the department says there is no need to insert H as part of Clause 38 because it is covered by Clause 391B on the next page. So just to show 391B, it does uh, refer you to consultations. So, Chair, for this one, um, I think uh, I'll do the PRASA one, uh, and then members can just indicate if they are happy to uh, agree with um, the addition of adequate and efficient into 
Let me just do the input from Prasa. Um, make sure that it's it's just that one. Here we go. Prasa comment is on C in line with the principle that the regulator should regulate within the prescripts of law, the factors that determine the feasibility of the underlying section where possible uh, connotes an exercise of a discretion. We therefore suggest that the factors that determines the exercise of the discretion should be defined in the regulations and what factors that the regulator should take into account in arriving to a conclusion. Therefore, the subsection should be revised as follows. Promote efficiency in transport facilities and services by facilitating competition and implementing regulations in accordance with the factors prescribed in the regulations issued by the minister. And the department indicated here that they note the comments, but the proposed additions are not necessary as section 54 talks to the minister making regulations in a prescribed manner and form. And just to quickly go to 54 for members. There we go, there's the regulations uh, or the powers to regulate. So Chair, I think then uh, very important for this one and for our drafters is to see um, members' views on the possible addition here to 38 uh, as proposed mm. and agreed to. Yes, um, <clears throat> advocate. Do you see any hand on your side? I didn't see one popping up, Chair, but uh, we just need to know if whether members agree with it um, or not. Uh, so that want? the drafters don't um, insert something that our members don't want. You, you want me to change the rule here and Wait, say- Wait, Chair, there I'm seeing two hands are popping <laughs> up now, Chair. It's because me and you are requesting them. Honorable uh, McDonald. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Um, good morning, um, Advocate Nell. Um, Chairperson, I'm just wondering um, if the, to promote the, the adequate and efficient investment, uh, Jefferson, I think it reads nicer and also it would stop um, um, uh, entities um, um, spending money on investment in it and, and it's only, um, let, for an example, it, 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 it's a bus stop, but, but it has no ramp for people with, with wheelchair access. And then they could say, but it, it was a, a appropriate investment in the transport facility and, and, and it is a service, but it's not adequate and it's not efficient uh, for, 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 for the purpose. So I'm wondering if it would be a train smash to add that adequate and efficient investment in that uh, paragraph E, Chairperson. That's my only comment. If not, I'm happy with that, but I. It, it reads better, Jefferson, and it sounds a bit nicer. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable McDonald. Honorable Manu says, I am happy. Uh, advocate. Um, is there any trends managed to add the little spice added by uh, Honorable uh, McDonald, who's himself happy about the clearness of the um, the, the capture, actually supported by Honorable Manu. Gee, I I don't foresee any train smashes from this. Um, I think it will um, also expand on what kind of investment uh, you can do or that people do not just put money into a system um, for the sake of putting money into a system but that it actually works at the end. Um, some people could argue that the word appropriate investment is sufficient but it doesn't, um, it will not hurt if we also expand it to say that it must be appropriate, adequate and efficient. Thank you very much. Uh, can we support that addition? Let me see a hand. 
of seconding that addition so that we do what we are supposed to do. A hand that supports Honorable McDonald. How about to get to some club in South Africa? Not to all. There is a hand. Uh, hey, whose hand was that? Hey, this hand was very fast, like lightning. Can it was Honorable that? Manu who sent the uh, chairperson. No, it's not Honorable Manu. It's Honorable John Bilancolo. I've seen him. It's uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Member. Uh, can we move, uh, Advocate Almanen? Yes, thank you, Chair. Our next one is Clause 42 on research and public information. Uh, members will see here it's on 42.2. Okay, there we go. So the aviation industry representatives have suggested um, the following clause. Any request for research made to the regulator must be considered on the merits of its reasonableness and benefits to the industry, after which funding arrangements will be made by the regulator and other interested parties as may be necessary. The department's response to this proposal is that it is supported. Um, and then they say clause 42.1. So, Chi, I think the department may just need to clarify if they are supporting adding this to 42.2 or if they are saying that 42.1 covers uh, what is proposed in, by the aviation industry. Um, before I go to item 2A of Schedule 2, Chair. Um. <clears throat> Ms. Ranzo. Yeah, um, <laughs> thank you, Chairperson. Um, the project manager is also in the meeting, but what we're saying is that what was suggested is already incorporated um, and supported in close um, 42 of one. Uh, if Mr. Mogedi can confirm. Uh, thanks, uh, Ms. Re Ranzo. Riranzo Mashaba. Yes, sir. Yeah, some people think it's your Mashaba. Mashaba, ne? Yes, Mashaba. Aha. And that don't make it is good. Oh, now listen, but I'm going to go on. Kalebua, Honorable Chairperson, and good morning to the Honorable Members and the colleagues. Uh, is It is indeed, we, we support the suggestion the the one should be two is just a typo chair. Sorry about that. Thank you, Nyabo. Advocate Almanel. Chair, if the, the department is then happy to add this um, in 42.2, then we'll need members input on whether they will agree with that addition just so that our draft is known to add it into the draft A list. Thank you very much. Uh, the first hand, uh, Honorable uh, Lawrence, you happy? Yeah, thank you, Chairperson. I'm happy with adding it uh, as suggested by the, the Airlines Association uh, and the aviation, you know, aviation, Chairperson and myself. Um, um, I think, um, um, Adding it there would be would would surely help the investment in, in future investment in aviation. I think, and adding it there by number two would would greatly assist because the, the number two doesn't uh, give enough uh, meat to the bone there, Jefferson. So I'm I'm happy with that. Well, if we can have a, a proper inclusion, and I, I don't know how to phrase it properly, but the legal minds will do that. Thank you, Jefferson. Any seconda? Any other view? If there's no second, or oh, there is a, a no, Mama Unon, who was it? Hey, this 
portfolio committee members today, they are very fast. Can, can I see the hand once more? Okay, let me leave that there, Baba Umanu. I'm seconding the proposal as requested, Chair. Thank you. Can you please tell your people that they should not develop a new style of raising hands, Honorable Manu? I will talk to my people, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Advocate Almanel. Thank you, Chair. Then just a little bit patience while I try and get to our schedule two. We go schedule two and it's item 2a so it is the continuation of tariffs in force and effect and then if we look at the a list that we published schedule one That's schedule two. Okay. Now the input here from the aviation industry for this chair is that they are proposing that each regulated entity must submit a proposal to the regulator and user. The department's view on this is that clause 114A does indicate that the regulated entities must submit a proposal to the regulator and interested parties. So that is for the continuation of the tariffs. And if I go to 114A, members will see here, that is 114A. That does say that they must consult with interested parties and the public in the prescribed manner. So the department is not agreeing to that proposal, Chair. Um, I'm not seeing any hands popping up. So Chair, then we can probably go to section 47. Yes, go to section 47. Yes, yeah, there were some additions in the A-list to that clause. quite a few additions. Chair, so I'm going to try and run all the documents here in case we need to. So members will see here the input here from PRASA is that they are saying section 47 should be augmented with minimum qualifications and experiences for council members. And the department's view on this was that was that section 47.3 is very clear and there is no need for further modifications. And if we look at 47.3, um, members of the council, when viewed collectively, must comprise sufficient suitably qualified persons with experience in law, economics, accounting, and the transportation industry. And if we look here, um, this is just that after, or just to also add the process of the committee's work in terms of looking at the suitable candidates and the nominations then for appointment to the council chair. So chair, this is similar to the previous comments on the um, the board members. Uh, the department is, does feel that the bill sufficiently covers the required qualifications or the minimum qualifications required. Uh, chair, then to clause 50 and the comments from Traxion. 50 is on the finances, the regulator and the council. Members will see in the A list, there was just a additional um, or the removal there of reference to the year of the Public Finance Management Act for drafting style. Process comment here, I mean, Traxian's comment. 
is that they are concerned that the cost of running the two entities could run away and create an inefficient bureaucracy funded by operators. The regulator and the council should be fully funded and controlled by parliament. And the department's response to this is that funding from the fiscus is unavoidable in the short term, but in the medium term, the institution should be self-funding. Principles of how fees charged to regulated entities will be set. Uh, concurrence of the Minister of Finance is required. The overall amount of money collected is in line with the needs of the Transport Economic Regulator or the Council and the actual cost of regulation. Checks and balances to ensure the regulator is as efficient as possible in completing the regulatory task and regulation is only undertaken where it improves economic outcomes and value for money. Independent financing is critical for regulatory independence. So Chair, the department is of the view that um, as it is, the bill should be sufficient to cover the funding requirements. Um, they do indicate here that it's both funding from regulated entities appropriated by parliament, other fees payable in terms of the act, income derived from investments and deposits of surplus money, as well as other money accruing from any other source that does not create a conflict of interest. So Chair, then still on the same clause, but now a comment from PRASA, uh, but specifically to 51A, which is the annual fees paid by regulated entities. PRASA is suggesting that section 50 be amended as follows. The regulator and the council are each financed from A, the annual fees to be paid by regulated entities in terms of section 51. Money appropriated by parliament, any other fees payable in terms of this act. D, income derived from its investment and deposit of surplus money in terms of subsection 2B. And E, other money accruing from any other source that does not create a conflict of interest as determined by the minister and prescribed by regulation. Now, the department's view on this is that this suggestion is not supported. Um, excluding the words as determined by the minister, we are allowing self-regulation to take place. And at the most, regulated entities will not pay fees to fund the regulator and council. So it's very important um, in terms of regulation in general to have the fees published. We see it even with our vehicle licensing fees, with toll fees. Um, and any other fees that the regulators have to impose on entities because it also allows for a consultation process in the publication thereof, instead of just saying that the minister determines it or that the entity determines it. And if we do look at 51, which Prasa is uh, trying to bring in here, is that it does indicate how the minister will then look at and determine uh, the fees that will eventually then be published. So it gives that whole process there. You have to link these two um, sections of the bill because the first one just says that um, this is where we determine it from and it has to be determined by the minister in publication. You cannot just say that um, it's just to be done in terms of 51. So it does give the clarity there. Gee, that is... Um, the comments from those entities on those sections. We are going to jump back to section 46. I've not seen any hands pop up yet. So 46 again is the establishment of Transport Economic Council. And this is a comment from the African Rail Industrial Association. They are proposing to insert the purpose of the council to provide context to its functions in section 48. And then the department has indicated here that sections 46 and 48 explain the purpose and the role of the council. So those are covered in that. They are not agreeing to add it into this top section. Then going down to section 47, again, same from the African Rail Industrial Association. 47 is on the council members. We see here that uh, it's 47A is the first one. They are saying setting a minimum for the shortlist is restrictive. Uh, what if the nomination is for a replacement of one member 
who has resigned or been removed. So the department's response to this is that clause 473A and B of the A-list addresses this matter. This is covered by clause 473D of the A-list. So just to bring up the A-list here for members. Members will see there that is the participation from the parliament committees in the nomination and the appointment. So the department feels that our draft A list that was published is will sufficiently cover the concerns raised. Then members will see 47 8. Just minimize that one, 47.8. Okay, there we go, it's right in line here. So the African Rail Industrial Association is saying it's not clear how three-year term or four-year term members are determined. And the department's response to this is that 47.8 is very clear in terms of first appointments and or any time there is a complete simultaneous turnover in the membership of the council, thus the terms of the council members must be varied. Then on to clause 49.2, that is the conflicting interests. The submission from African Rail Industrial Association is uh, with regard to significant relationship, they would like this to be defined under the definitions. In general terms, it refers to a spectrum of close emotional connections. The department's response to this is that the definition of a significant relationship is addressed by section 49.3. Members will see here that we do get a definition in the clause that indicates that it is employment relationship or professional engagement within the immediately preceding 12 months or connection to a related or interrelated person. So their view is that it is sufficiently covered and it doesn't need a specific definition to be added to the first clause of the bill. Then on to section 50 on the finances. We see here that um, they are indicating that they are concerned that the cost of running the two new entities could run away and create an efficient bureaucracy funded by operators. The regulator and council should be fully funded and controlled by parliament. Again, members will see this is similar to the previous comments um, and the department has the same response to that. As we've discussed a little bit earlier. Then we get to clause 58.3, input from PROSA. Just to 58. There we go, the powers to enter and search. Members will see here that PROSA suggested that section 58.3 be amended as follows. An inspector authorized to conduct an entity, uh, an entry and search in terms of section 53 must be accompanied and assisted by a police officer. The department's response to this is that no changes should be made from May to must due to capacity constraints of authorities. This will happen on a case by case situation. Then on to clause 64A. Members will see here that is the offenses relating to the regulator and council. And if we just check our A list, draft A list 64, um, there was just a few additions that the members proposed there in the previous rounds. But looking at the input here from the African Rail Industrial Association, they are suggesting that uh, there be a deletion of the word calculated. That would be that one right there. Um, it may be problematic since a person may still do something uncalculated or improperly influence a regulator. The transgression is to act out the intention. Calculatedness is immaterial. The department has indicated here that they are amenable to the suggestion. 
So members, this is one then again that we just need clarity for our drafters. Uh, Chair, nice to see there is a hand on this one. Chairperson is still here. Sorry, sorry about that. I was muted. Yes, the end belongs to Honorable McDonald. Thank you. Uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I agree that the calculated um, uh, does, that, that word does not belong there. Um, I think. Uh, uh, any person commits an offence who does anything to improperly influence anything, it doesn't have to be calculated, uncalculated, uh, th that word doesn't belong there, Chairperson, I, I agree with that. But Chairperson, I can, I, on the previous uh, item, on the may and must, um, uh, can I, I would really like... Um, because it, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, that, does that mean that the regulator does not need a police officer to to search a premises or to search a, 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 a entity because then I'm a bit concerned because that's not legally correct because no search can be done without uh, um, um, a police officer. So if I can get some clarity on that, Chairperson, thank you. Otherwise, I'm happy. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Honorable McDonald, for your. Um, active participation before we, or oh, let, let us maybe get an explanation and get a seconder and move. Advocate explanation or department. Honorable Chairperson, uh, that's exactly the position of the department, uh, which has been explained by Honorable McDonald, where you would have a situation where you don't really need an inspector or a police officer to accompany the inspector to, to inspect uh, whatever needs to be inspected. So if you put the word must, it therefore means at every occasion, uh, there must be a, 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 a police officer accompanying an inspector chair. So the may then gives a discretion that allows a situation where there is no need of a a police officer to accompany an inspector, then that should happen, Chair. Thank you. That's why we're proposing that we leave the, the, the way to may instead of must. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. That is kudo. That is kudo. Thank you very much. Let's see any seconder that uh, we should move. We're happy, happy, like uh, Honorable McDonald has said. Where are the people of this portfolio committee? I can see that Ukatlamba has trained my people. Come back. Uh, there is a hand there. Oh, uh, Honorable Chris Wilsinger, are you happy? Um, Chairperson, um bit of a concern. Okay. I, I, I think search um, is rather specific to the functions of police. Whereas I can see that there might be a occasion or conditions under which an inspection is required in relation to the functions and role um, within the ambit of this bill. Um, so therefore, I suggest consideration of the word inspection um, to then um, align to the purpose that, that might arise um, to verify conditions necessary for a inspection uh, opposed to the functions of police, which is understood under the word search for which warrants are required under most conditions. Obviously, if there is a suspicion uh, of a condition, uh, a police officer can then search without a warrant. 
um, but then that's rather thin ice. But then in this instance, chairperson, I would then ask for the consideration of the word inspection, uh, which might align uh, to a condition where police officers are not necessary, necessary to accompany uh, such uh, occasions. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, honorable member. There it is. Honorable member, let me hear from you. We need to support or have a different view. There is a hand of Honorable Lawrence McDonald. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I, you see, Chairperson, I'm participating fully today. Um, I can see that. I'm happy, happy, happy. Uh, Chairperson, um, I, I, I want to concur because with Honorable Hans Singer, um, the problem is searching. Um, searching under the law without a police officer present is a is a is a is a is a minefield of constitutional rights that will be broken. So I think when by removing the the, the entry and search in terms of section fifty three, uh, I think we, we we must change that to um, then we leave the word may and change the word to inspection. Then it, that. That would, then I would support that, Chairperson. Thank you very much. That was support for Honorable McDonald. Anybody who has any different views from Honorable members, uh, I see somebody from, or something from Me uh, Raksha Haricharan. Your views, ma'am. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, just regarding the member's concern regarding um, Section 58 of the Bill, the powers to enter and search, Section 58, Subsection 3, as discussed, um, the issue of the word must and may. Chairperson, if I may refer the members to, well, we are dealing with um, uh, Clause 58.3, but if I may refer the members to Clause 58.1 of the Bill, under the heading of powers to enter and search, um, clause 58 one states that a person who is authorized under section 57 to enter and search premises may, and there's a list of provisions there, and then enter upon or into these premises to be search those premises, et cetera. Um, if I may share the, the clause 58.3 is to be read in tandem with Clause 58.1, which stipulates that the person is authorized under Section 57 to enter and search premises may. And if I may refer the uh, committee to Clause 57 of the bill, it deals with the authority to enter and search under warrant. Uh, Clause 57.1, if I may read, states a judge of the High Court or magistrate may issue a warrant to enter and search any premises that are within the jurisdiction of that judge or magistrate if from information on oath or affirmation, there are reasonable grounds to believe that. Um, subsection A, a contravention of this act has taken place, is taking place or is likely to take place on or in those premises, or B, that anything connected with an investigation in terms of this act is in the possession of or under the control of a person who is on or in those premises. And there are various other provisions, um, subsequent two, three, four, five, and six under clause 57. Um, so if the, so if clause 58.3 may be read in conjunction with clause 57 of the Economic Regulation of Transport Bill, I think this will provide greater, greater clarity of the intention of this clauses and its meaning. Thank you, Chair. 57 red with 58. Uh, let me go back to the two members. As you know, lower your hand. May Archeren, your hand is still up. As you lower your hand, uh, Honorable Hun Singer, is that clear? Uh, Chairperson, it is absolutely clear. I'm still um, of the opinion that 
um, prior to such a severe condition, there should be opportunity for an ordinary inspection um, before a uh, like legal avenue is sought to get a a proper mandate there. Um, but in terms of the connection and the, the particular um, section, it is quite clear and therefore uh, uh, as built in um, all the conditions um, subject to, you know, the may or the must. Um, and it might be a separate point that I raise that uh, an inspection should be allowed before such severe action should be undertaken. Also, Chairperson, can I ask for a particular example um, under which conditions, you know, such a severe action would be needed? Can the department give us an example uh, of where uh, Section 58 would come into play? Thank you very much, um, Honorable Hunsinger. Um, as I capture it, We'll go to the example just now. As I capture it, you are happy with the explanation. You are raising it. <clears throat> Thank you very much. You are raising a point, though that the uh, inspection must or may be considered before we get to this level, which I think, uh, uh, let, let me hear if uh, uh, Honorable McDonald still supports so that we can be clear, Honorable McDonald. Thank you, Chairperson. I agree. Uh, um, uh, we, 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 we don't, Chairperson, this is a little bit like an issue of we're trying to, uh, before we are certain that a person is guilty, we have now already locked him up. And this is the type of, I'm, I'm afraid that that I also have, have the, the same feeling, Chairperson, that, that don't you, we should first do an inspection. And then if the inspection, if we've, then with the next step must be coming. We, we, otherwise it becomes like a, like a authoritarian state that we, this can easily be misused as, as a way of just quickly getting information from somebody or something. And we must make it sure that this thing is constitutionally correct. I don't want the, um, uh, the issue that the, the president has to send the ball back because it's unconstitutional, Chairperson. So if we can just get very good clarity on this before we continue. Thank you, Chair. Okay, my understanding is that this matter has been clarified. What we are left with is um, an example from the legal people that will also include the department uh, under the capable hands of Mary Ranzu. I second, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much. I support. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, McDonald. Any example um, where Section 58 may have been invoked? Honorable Chair, it's more get here. I'll give one simple example, Chair. But I think I, from my personal point of view, I welcome the suggestion that is made by the Honorable Members with regard to having clauses that talks to inspection prior to uh, instituting section 58 in terms of uh, entry and, and, and search. Chair, I think it's something that we we'll probably have to go back and see how we embed a, a clause related to that chair. However, a, a simple example chair is that to be giving powers to the regulator to determine tariffs or determine prices and that determination is based on the information that would be sourced from the regulated entities in the main. Uh, there would be an instance that you would know when a, a, a proposal is submitted by a regulated entity, it's based on the assets of a regulated entity that are owned and managed by a regulated entity. And some information may not be disclosed by a regulated entity, whereas the regulator may be aware of such an information that has a bearing in the determination of that tariff uh, chairperson. So therefore, these clauses are giving 
the powers to the regulator to be able to access that information. For example, there may be a port that may have not been disclosed by, by the Transnational National Ports Authority, which may have a bearing in the determination of the tariff. And therefore, the regulator with these clauses has an opportunity or has a right to go and access information from that port. Uh, maybe, yes, the, the wording may be too strong, uh, but I'm not a legal person to rework the wording, but it's more of giving access to the regulator to be able to uh, gain information in a specific investigation or when they determining prices and tariffs, Jefferson. Yeah, I think, I hope I have clarified the matter from that angle, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Tate Moeketsi Skudo. Uh, Advocate Alma Nell. Chair, I just pulled up the, the index to the bowl. Um, just so that members can see here. Um, I don't see a specific clause on inspection, which um, the members have suggested. Now the department has indicated that they do think it will be a good idea to um, have or to look at the possibility of having a specific clause on the inspection. I think our legal drafters um, can look at that, but we also need to just consider from the point of view of the process, it would be a new clause and that new clause may need um, an additional publication. So we might just need to get clarity there from them if we are bringing it in, if it's not sufficiently or suitably covered within the powers um, to, for example, subpoena information or call for information. Mm -hmm. That's why I just flagged, um, I put 56 up for members, which is the clause that's preceding 58 that we looked at, because 56 is, um, a general power that they will have similar to what the committee has to call for information. It's then mm -hmm. normally when you call for information um, or you call a person to appear, this is all about getting information or getting the persons to appear. Similar to what the committee has in terms of their subpoena powers, our, our committee. But then this is where 57 will then kick in when the people are not forthcoming or the regulator may have been provided with some information that um, the people are withholding information. And that is then when you go for the court order. So one could argue that these powers under the subpoena is actually then where your investigation process is taken off. But if our drafters look at this, um, considering members' feelings and input here today, and uh, the, it does come out of this that this would not be sufficient in terms of needing a clause for inspections itself, actual physical inspections, then um, they will have to drop that one afresh and anew. So Chair, I just thought I would just point that out. Um, it could be a similar publication to the way that we did the, 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 the recent one on um, members, um, involvement in the appointment of the council, which wasn't there before. So it will follow that same process. We might have a next round of submissions when we do do that, Chair. But I do think it will assist in the quality of the bill if we have it, if the subpoena clause does not sufficiently cover it, Chair. And then I have noted that members who have agreed, I think with Mr. McDonald's notion here for clause 64 to remove calculated. And if Chair is happy, um, she will just let me know when I can move on. Um, thank you, Advocate. The, the spirit of um, the, the debate, as I get it, should actually be covered by what you are raising in Section 56. 
I think that the concern from the members, I will allow them to say um, if I'm correct or wrong. The concern was that how, how do you arrive at 58? Uh, is there any other process that is undertaken clearly that if that process is failing, then we can jump to uh, 58? Uh, the explanation that you are giving at um, uh, section 56, am I correct? You talked about 56, eh? Yes, Chair, 56 would be um, <clears throat> where they look at calling persons and looking at the documents, but not physically going to the facilities. Mm -hmm. let's, let's say, for example, somebody is requesting access to... Um, a section of transnet rail line for purposes of let's say transporting additional freight um, but transnet is saying oh but that line doesn't exist but everybody in the area knows that the line exists now the 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 body here would then in terms of their subpoena powers be able to call for the documents and for people to come and testify let's say a person comes and testifies or produces photos to say that look that line is actually there uh, but Transnet will still say, no, it's not there. Then the, the, the regulator will then have to go to the court here in terms of 57 and get a court order in order to go and enter and search the premises or the, the, the rail reserve for purposes of determining whatever they need to determine, either in terms of then granting the access or determining fares. And then once they have the court order, that is then uh, when the powers to search and enter will come in. And then it is, you, you, if, if let's say, especially under 58.1, let's say the person that you, go, you are going to the, the property, they, they're okay with you coming in and entry. That is normally when the may will come in. So yes, okay, I may enter, I'm granted permission, I will enter and I will do all of these things. If I don't have permission, and that's normally where the concern comes in, mm -hmm. um, unless the court says you can enter without a police officer, specifically in their court order, but they'll hardly ever do that. Let's say the person says, no, I'm not giving you entry or permission. This is then what I believe the department is trying to say is that on a case-by-case -case basis, if the, the, the entity that's going to be inspected saying, I will not let you in unless you come here with a police officer, that is then when uh, 58.3 comes in and where they will then be accompanied or assisted by a police officer if needed. That is how I would understand it, Chief. But I do see the concern that members could have that some of these inspectors may want to um, rock up there at the venue and say, I have these powers in terms of the act, whether I have a police officer or not, so you must give me entry. And that is then when the concern may come in that the persons that are being um, inspected, physically inspected or forced entry at that point may go to court and say, but you did this outside of the confines of the law, especially if a court order will not be standard in terms of stating that they can enter with or without a police officer. Okay. Jay, that is, that is how I would run the sequence and the examples of it. I, I think... Um... I would like I'm saying I, I would just test this with the matters with the with the members. The explanation was sufficing. There was a new point that was raised. Let me just check if we really want to engage with that point if it will take us to public participation. Uh, let me just go back to my members. Ubaba Galisa Wagamanu, Ubaba Ukris Hunsinga, in that order. Chairperson, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I I am slightly skeptical um, on us going into another process of public uh, participation due to the time frame that we have taken here. Um, however, because that implication of the proposal by my colleague, Honorable McDonald, was not sponsored by me, 
um, I would request that maybe our drafters look at a way of encapsulating the proposal and avoiding another public participation. I think it will work against us um, unless my colleagues feel otherwise. My consideration is both factual uh, effect of that proposal and the time factor that we are working against. Thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> Thank you, Honorable uh, Manu. Uh, uh, Ms. Says we are going to manage Ms. Legas. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I remind my colleague, uh, Lisa Mandu, that it is exactly because of the time factor that uh, R2 ended up where it is, and NLTA was sent back to this committee. We should strive to write good legislation and proper legislation and thorough legislation. Therefore, Chairperson, I am convinced that the addition of a uh, inspection component um, between sections 56 and 57 would uh, absolutely uh, cover the very important question that will be asked upon an application um, to search. And that application needs to explain what reasonable steps and measures has been undertaken in order to justify this very severe act of allowing a forced search. And if we then have the fallback of a clause which allows for inspection on a voluntary basis, and based on the fact that this voluntary inspection was not allowed, and that there's no other recourse other than to get this very important search warrant. I feel we are, we are good in terms of the Constitution, particularly Section 36 of the Constitution, which speaks to dignity, um, equality, and freedom. Uh, and therefore, Chairperson, I think it would improve this legislation. I do not believe that it might require absolutely a publication and therefore a further uh, public participation process. I think it can be crafted in a way uh, where it is, it is structured as a default um, just to make section 57 stronger. Um, so in phrasing it as a default, I think that creates the, uh, the, the opening so that it would not be seen as a new addition, but that it would be seen as a supporting addition. Thank you, Chairperson. I think this matter is settled, Advocate. Are we, are we in tandem with what the, uh, the, the members are saying? Chair, um, yes, if, if the drafters can work it uh, and word it in such a way. Um, I mean, the department may know of a another clause that I might be missing at the moment that um, it could be inserted in there uh, because you could also add it under um, the clauses that give the powers to inspect or do physical inspection to the inspectors um, if it's already somewhere in, in the bowl there, then I'm sure the department and the drafters can make sure um, that, let's say, where they give the powers to the officers to inspect or to become inspectors, they add it in there, then it should be something that flows from the context and the content that's already there. It would not then be a new or an additional or uh, aspect that is beyond the scope. So I think that the drafters could look at that and perhaps guide the committee to where it will be best placed, then one can um, ensure that it's done within the normal A-list um, drafting perspective, Chair. Advocate, are we ready to proceed? I think this one has been canvassed sufficiently. Yes, Chair, uh, we did. Um, Get support there from members for removal here of, um, if we are going to remove the word calculated, then 64, I will just read, does anything to improperly influence the regulator 
concerning any matter connected with an investigation. And I'm sure our drafters would have noted uh, the support there for that one. Chair, then on item 29B of the A-list is the next comment. Uh, so I'm assuming this is in the schedules. Let me just get to 29. And that is 29B. So it's this um, in the draft A list that the African Rail Industry Association is saying that the point there is not important. But the department has indicated here that their comment is not clear. Uh, just then to refresh members here, it is a substitution. So that that clause then would read, may request advice from the regulator regarding any action which he or she may take in terms of subsection three or four. Then chair again to schedule one consequential amendments. Uh, this is now input from the Western Cape Department of Transport and Public Works. Their recommendation there was that um, section 28 of the NLTA be amended by the insertion of the words and any price controls determined by the regulator after the words subject to the Municipal Fiscal Powers and Functions Act. The department's view is that they support um, this proposed amendment to section 28 of the NLTA. So Chair, here, I think if, if it is possible for the department to just indicate, um, we, we are in the process of, or there was an amendment to the NLTA. Obviously this will speak to the old NLTA. Uh, if they can just make sure that if there was an amendment to section 28 of the NLTA, that this would not, um, or how it would impact that um, bill that proposes amendments to the NLTA. I hope the department is able to assist members with that because if we are agreeing um, to insertion of these words there, this is gonna be amendment, but we need to make sure that the amendment that will then go back to the president after we are done with the NLTA, um, that that's not going to read different, Chair. I think if the department can just assist here. Yeah. That is kudo. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, from where we sit, Chairperson, is to uh, embed or include that uh, paragraph or section under page 38. If you look at page 38, which is part of consequential amendments, uh, there's an amendment of National Land Transport Act there, which has 0.4. So we we'll probably have to add this, this, this clause there that indicates that we would want to amend the NLTA as, as proposed here, Chair. Um, obviously, it will affect the numbers going forward in terms of the section of the consequential amendments, Chair. That's, that's the proposal that we're making for consideration by the Portfolio Committee. Thanks. Advocate. Uh, Chair, um, <laughs> I, well, the, I can see the proposal there, but we don't know how this wording is in the current NLTA amendment bill. And we don't know if, um, well, it will come in there eventually then if we do um, include it here, it will co go into that one. Um, I don't think it'll amend the, or it'll affect the number. It'll just affect the numbering down here um, in this bill. If, if the department is happy with that, then chair, then uh, I'm sure we can continue. And if members agree with, with, with the department's proposal to add a chair. You want, you want a specific agreement? <clears throat> um, members, let me see happiness. 
the it is uh, honorable Chris Chris Winsinger. Uh, yep. We must be mindful that this is an implication that would only um, have effect later on, um, you know, with the entities being being sort of uh, merged um, into this new entity. So I don't think it is a crisis, an immediate crisis, but it's something that needs to be addressed going forward. Um, in practical terms, I would imagine that we would address the NLTA with the deficiencies um, exposed, um, you know, in terms of the constitutional matters and sent back to the president and uh, president's office. And obviously, this is one of the items which would need to be addressed uh, going forward in a review of the NLTA uh, at a later stage. Uh, so I think we must just be mindful of this and the department obviously has the prerogative thing to alert us and to, you know, table this particular or other sections of the NLTA that we need to look at um, in order to um, accommodate um, um, functioning of the economic regulator bill. But it's not a threat currently for now. Thank you, Honorable Hunsinger. <clears throat> Any other view? Or are we happy with the view from Honorable Unsina as he lowers his hand, of course? Any other view, members? Or are we happy with the, what the, uh, Honorable Unsina is saying? I don't want to call members individually. <laughs> Please assist me. I think um, if we go through the following two, they also affect the NLTA. So then members can just indicate at the end of these ones whether or not they are happy with the additional amendments to be added here to the amendment of the NLTA chair. Okay. Chair, then just here for members, um, the, the Western Cape Department also indicated here that section 38 of the NLTA will also be impacted. The same for section 411C. Um, the department also indicated there that it's noted and they do support it. Um, and then there's another one here. Uh, it also impacts broadly on the provisions of chapter six of the NLTA, especially the rationalization of existing permits. And that one was also noted and supported. Uh, by the department chair. So those are all the ones that then, if the department is in agreement and members are in agreement that our drafters will just need to make sure that all the clauses that are impacted are included here as they did for section 21 in the bill. So Jay, I am not seeing any Opposition, wait, there's a hand there, Chair, from the department. Chairperson. Chairperson, I see that you are still online. Uh, can you unmute yourself, please?
Where are my members? We are all here, Chepes. What do they say? Chair, there was a hand from the department on the inclusions of these amendments to the NLTA. I don't see that hand, uh, uh, advocate, but it's okay. May, may I come through, Chair? Yes, you can come through. Uh, on well, uh, it, it is the school who had. had. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. It is me who had raised the hand, but after consideration, uh, of the comment that was made by Advocate Nell that the drafters and the legal people will have to look at these comments and, and, and see how best to respond to them and factor them in the bill if need be. I think we'll, we'll take that opportunity to revisit this area as well, Chairperson. Uh, and with the comments that have been made by, 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 by the members uh, in terms of the uh, amendment of the uh, National Land Transport Act as well. So we'll, we'll factor that point, Chair. So my request is that we look at these comments and see how we embed them in the in the bill itself, because they are more 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 relevant for the consequential amendments that needs to be looked at, Chair. I don't know whether I'm clear there, but I think we need to revisit these areas, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Ndate Moeketsi, Sikudo. Members, do we accept that? Is that acceptable, honorable members? Uh, Lawrence uh, McDonald says, yes, it is acceptable. Thank you very much, honorable McDonald. Uh, any other member? Uh, Honorable McDonald, you see, is it does not help to speak on behalf of the collective. You said we are here. Any other honorable member with any other view except this, if there's any other view? Okay, thank you. Advocate? Thank you, Chair. Then moving on, uh, the next comment is also on Schedule 1. They are saying it's page 37. That's the page that I'm flagging. Um, Chair, again, this is uh, Transnet, uh, concerned about um, the lodgement with the regulator within 20 business days from date of lodge signature of the agreement. Um, their view is that this should be 30 business days instead of 20. Um, and they are indicating the, that points one and 1.2 and 1.3 are agreements from Transnet. So it just indicates that Transnet does agree with those um, proposed provisions in that schedule one. So Chair here, uh, the department is in agreement with Transnet's proposal to change the time frame there from 20 business days to 30 business days. Um, I think my, I'm not sure if their page reference is correct here. They are saying it's in one six, it will be up here. And if members are in agreement, there we go, there's the 20 business days. It's on page 36, not 37. So it's under this provision in the National Ports Act. Um, I think agreement must be lodged with regulator. There we go. So Chair, this is the proposal the department is saying, okay, we're happy to move it to 30 business days. We just need to get input here from members if members are also in agreement to move it to 30 business days instead of 20 business days, Chair, just for the drafters, so we can add it in the A-list. 
Okay, I can see you are changing my way of sharing. Um, I don't have a problem because we had said if members have an issue, they will raise their hands, but let me follow what you are requesting of me. Members are happy. Uh, there is Honorable McDonald happy. And then I've, so, I've seen another hand. What was the other hand? Aha. Baba Ulisa Gamangu. Happy. Happy. Advocate. Thank you, Chairperson. Then we are almost to the end. Two more pages to go. Schedule one here again, a comment from Pros, uh, from Transnet, uh, where they speak to the section 72 amendments of the National Ports Act. Uh, I think if we look at our A list. Um, There's all the regulations under the schedule. Just to have that in the background here, Chair, they are proposing um, or they're indicating here that the proposal does not provide clarity as to whether the authority is still required to submit the tariff book to the regulator or not. Currently, the tariff book is submitted to the regulator for approval and sign off in a separate process. Transnet requires clarity as to whether the price control includes the list of services and charges to customers, which will be approved by the regulator simultaneously when the price controls are established. The department has indicated here that the matter is addressed in Schedule 2, the transitional provisions. Specifically, it is item 2, 1, 2, and 3. So let's just go to schedule two, number two. So the department is saying these uh, concerns are covered in here. Um, where in migration will happen on current arrangements or practices. For example, item 23B on licenses. So that is, for example, that one. Then chair, the department has indicated here that um, it includes the list of services and charges to customers, which will be determined by the regulator simultaneously when the price controls are established as contemplated in section 11. So Chair, that is one then, um, that portion of the comment, but there is a, another one on that amendment to section 72. Section 72. Uh, from Transnet here again, they indicate that a proposal to amend clause or well, to amend Section 72 of the National Ports Act by substituting Section 4, which enables the authority to enter into agreements with licensed operators and port users based on variation of tariffs as contemplated in Subsection 1, will have undesirable consequences. This is on the understanding that price controls are prescriptive and limit tariff variation. It's Transnet's view that the authority's prerogative to enter into varied agreements or contracts of a commercial nature with its customers should continue. The authority will continue to the submissions of agreements um, concluded with customers to the regulator within recommended period of 30 days. The department's uh, response to this is that clear clauses on these matters are stipulated in section seven on page 10. The section talks about co content of access agreements and notification to the regulator. In principle, the regulator will get involved when there's a disagreement between access owner and access seeker. Just to take members again to seven. Seven does look at the contents of access agreements and notifications to the regulator. So the department is of the view and confident that this will be sufficient to cover these concerns raised. Chair, Chair that is the end of the, um, the matrix as supplies following the additional call for submissions on the ERT bill.
Thank you, Advocate. Members, are we happy? Do you want to say something? Thank you, uh, Honorable McDonald. The happy, I can see. Any other hand? Happiness? Okay, any unhappiness? Okay. Valerie? Yes, Chief. Where are we going now? Um, Chair, the, 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 in terms of the um, agenda, there's the minutes of 15 March. Yes, Valerie. In terms of, in terms of this <laughs> process. Okay, um, sorry, Chair, lack of sleep. <laughs> Chair, um, the department um, is a, and the um, legal advisors, in terms of the discussion, there's some issues for, for feedback. So um, bearing in mind the program uh, or the meetings finishes next week, we need an indication chair from when they can provide that feedback to the committee, because if they can't do it next week on the 29th, then the earliest date would probably be after the committee's oversight, which is then the 26th of April after the recess period. Okay, <clears throat> maybe we should allow them time um, uh, sufficiently so that they don't come back rushy, unless they say they can be able to do a good job and come back next week. Let me hear from them. Mary Rans. Um, Thank you very much, Chairperson. I think I support the 26th of April to give us sufficient time to provide concise um, reporting. Thank you. Yeah. The I will not ask you many questions. <laughs> I'm giving you that option. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Valerie, we will see this issue um, after um, the oversight. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Can we then deal with the minutes of the 15th? of uh, March. Uh, I've gone through the minutes. I'm sure members have gone through the minutes. Can we get a, a, a mover and a seconder for minutes? If there's any, if there's no any other issue that members wants to raise. Uh, is the hand of Honorable McDonald a new hand or an old hand? Chairperson, it's, a, it's an old new hand, Chairperson. Um, I want to propose the adoption of the minutes, and but Chairperson, I also would honorably request you to just give me an opportunity before you close the meeting to just raise something, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any seconder? Seconder for the minutes, Honorable Ufigilewaga. Okay, Honorable McDonald. Uh, Chairperson, uh, apologies and thank you very much for allowing me, Chairperson. Uh, Chairperson, um, I humbly request um, that as the Portfolio Committee on Transport, we um, extend our humble condolences to the People's Republic of China on the airplane crash of yesterday of flight MU5735 that crashed and killed, um, I think 133 people on board uh, Chairperson. And um, I think it will be only prudent and right that uh, as a portfolio committee, 
even though we're in South Africa, and but South Africa is part of the global village, Jefferson, I think it's it, it will be proper for us to extend our condolences to the People's Republic of China for the accident that happened yesterday, Jefferson. Uh, um, please request. Thank you, Jefferson. Thank you very much. Um, oh, Mama Ofigi, is, is that an old hand? Valerie? It's an old hand, Jefferson. Sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members, let me thank you very much for the manner with which we handled the presentation of the people of Okasamba. Um, yeah, I think I've, I've heard you in terms of the oversight being declined, we uh, will write to necessary people as the chair. And I'm sure members will, uh, will agree with me that I should engage these people, um, the, um, the honorable members who are responsible for this. Otherwise, I think we had a, a good meeting. Uh, when is our next meeting, Valerie? Chair, that will be next week on the 29th to consider feedback on the on the traffic uh, amendment bill um, to look at the committee's draft program for the second term and to adopt the outstanding reports on the quarterly expenditure and also to consider the draft oversight program, Chair. It means we have, there's fireworks next week. <laughs> okay, Valerie, members should come back prepared. Uh, let's see how best can we handle that situation. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much, members. Uh, the meeting is adjourned until next week here at the same platform. Thank you very much. Have a beautiful thank you, day. Thank you, members. Thank you. It was a delight. Ah, um, Mkhayes. Ruku ile ka mafara Province ya bukone bu pirima. Re ka u thusa Mkhayes. Nka le bo ke le bo kile thata che. Ange Mkhayes, ntso le ntso ya hantle ka taba tsa skolo. Eh, I've always been progressive on that front, che. I I've I've never failed myself. Uh, everything is going well. Um, thank you, Jefferson. Thank you, Jefferson. Thank you very much, Honorable McDonald and everybody. Long live. I'm looking forward to the statement about the accident, Jefferson. Thank you very much. As 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 you have instructed. Thank you. Long live the chair. Long live. Thank you.